Hi, I'm Carl Walter, and I made this video to sh indicate what it might take to get the wing attach fittings out of a wing from a very easy. I acquired a, a section of a wing from from David, who's a, a friend from, from the internet, and he sent this to me because it was from a wing that needed to be rebuilt since it didn't come out quite as expected by the original builder. So it just got a piece of it here and it was easy to handle and it needed the wing attach fittings that had never been used to be removed. So as you can see, it doesn't have any wing attach fittings. The bottom section was never really completed. The top was done except for um, there's a, a set of holes that needed to be drilled uh, as an, yeah, across, across the uh, of this section of the, the top plate well, and bolted through to the one below it on both the bottom and the top. So this is not finished all the way. There's there's missing holes and there would be a screw extraction that would have to be involved with this process as well. Anyway, this so what we got is a, a wing that uh, is essentially undamaged and um, all, all the pieces uh, from uh, the wing catch fittings came out cleanly with no damage as well. This first section is just showing what we have. This section that was cut out of the wing. Um, uh, uh, not quite finished. Top side mostly done. Um, bottom side not uh, at all. Uh, but you can see the spar and the, um, the wing sections and the fittings and the duct tape put on it to keep the um, fiberglass off of it. So this is just, you know, several angles of view. This side, this plate would have more bolts going through it, which would have been under fiberglass originally, but you'd trim those off if you did an inspection to find out if there was corrosion here. So in the next section, you'll see the struggle to get the screws out at first, um, and that would apply to these other screws that aren't in this picture as well. So here's just, you know, taking the bolts out. Um, you would need to mine out this foam, which I have done later in the video, uh, in order to get to the, the other set of uh, bolts and screws. Uh, and here I'm just setting up with a clamp and the thermocouple uh, to monitor the temperature while I heat the, the screws. First I tried a small torch. I tried that for a little bit. It managed to get one of them out, but um, they're, they're glued in there. They're attached by um, fiberglass resin, so uh, they required more heat, and I ended up changing to a heat gun instead of the little torch. And this goes on for a while, and it wasn't very effective, so you can skip ahead. I will mention here that one really important thing was to have the right bit. This is a heavy duty hex bit, a Phillips head, uh, that fit the bolt perfectly. If you have anything less, you'll strip it out. Not that you're trying to save them, you can obviously put new ones in, but um, once you've stripped it out, it's really much more difficult to get the bolt out.
the little torch just didn't apply enough heat. There was, there was no way it was going to get there. So we switched over to heat gun. Heat gun ended up being the primary tool from here on out, and it did the job. You can see uh, already how much more quickly the temperature is rising. And that extra bit is just sitting on there to protect the thermocouple from getting direct heat, so it gives a more accurate reading of the uh, temperature of the plate, which is the quick heat shield. And here I used a, a flat um, chisel, a wood chisel, just to push upward on the screws so that um, there's no thread where they pass through the fiberglass, so they're just a shaft, so there's nothing to draw them up. And it actually required a little more force than that because there was nothing to push against. So um, the next step was to stack up some just some pieces of 2x4 to, to lever against. It didn't take a lot of force, it just needed something to work, work against. with some oh, like three pieces of two before stacked up between the uh, upper and the lower wing attach point and I've also worked the, the screws a little more get them looser and now I'm able to well you'll see eventually I'm able to push upward and get the screws to come out and here they lift out And there's a sort of too much video about screw removal here, but it actually it's pretty important because there's a lot of them, and you're, you, there's the ones that aren't even drilled in this that you have to give the same same treatment to, and so you have to actually a lot of fair amount of time for getting the, the screws out. It's doable. It's just um, it takes a while. So here I uh, actually upgraded my thermocouple plant and um, used a piece of silicone. Uh, it's for baking. It's really handy stuff to have on the baking sheets. Uh, you can just you know, put the wash down on high temperature and you can cut them up and use little pieces for all kinds of things. You'll see them uh, in this video a lot because I have, uh, I use them as heat shields and I use them as just um, protection for the, the aluminum and uh, they, they don't have, they're not affected at all by the the tempers that we're using. Here I'm actually turning the wrong way, but it doesn't matter because there's the threads aren't engaged in anything. I'm just trying to get them loose. And uh, you know the trick is to to use the right tool and not strip them out. <coughs> And I could have been a little warmer too. More heat in this case would have helped a lot. In the end, I go to about 95 um, because the temperature will continue to rise after you take the heat away. And I'm trying to avoid going over 100 C. These are numbers I kind of got from the West System documentation. This is probably not built with West System. It's probably built with something like Safety Epoxy or something older. Um, West System is actually a lower temperature stuff, but I just decided 100C is, um, uh, you know, a good top temperature that pretty likely didn't uh, harm the fiberglass.
and that's you know here's a place where I went over and this is because I went to 100 and then it kept rising um, I don't think we did any damage but I you know if I was doing this on a real airplane I would try to avoid going over 100 and maybe that's too conservative maybe it's too hot um, I don't you know from looking at the the fiberglass I don't think it's even it's not even getting that, that high a temperature it's the aluminum that you're seeing and it radiates pretty quickly so once they're um, warm they'll pop right out this is a this is a piece of carbon fiber tube I happen to have and I made a little bridge and so there's very little force involved there and it didn't hurt the aluminum and the surface you know once you've removed it is nice it's perfectly smooth and you can fit it right back in I tried it and it just it's you know it snaps right back in there So here I have to take out the, um, actually used a little drift, a tiny chisel to get these loose and then um, I just used some needle nose pliers with um, serrations in the jaw to unscrew the, the uh, screws that go into the, the side plates. These side plates aren't really fiberglassed in but they did get a little stuck along the top and the bottom edges and the screws themselves are a little stuck in, you know, a stray fiberglass. Depending on, you know, how the build went, um, this, these may or may not be more or less stuck in place. Um, in the end, I had to uh, make a sort of an incision above the other one um, just to make sure it was loose. So here I've heated and um, I have some uh, a tool with tape on it to prevent it from damaging the the uh, taper pin plate and it they just comes loose so they're still connected to each other and here's an example of how it'll snap back in again If you make sure all the edges are really clean, it'll go all the way down. I think these clips are a little bit out of order. This is made out of a whole bunch of little short videos. So I think that the one where I'm loosening the uh, paper pin plates should be after this other video section. But they're they're loose at this point. Both the upper and the bottom are loose. So I've heated them and and uh, popped them loose from the left fiberglass. But the whole thing won't come out yet until um, which I didn't video I go out and I um, I make a small hole with the rotary tool and here you can see the, the two holes on the top right beside the row of screw holes um, so that I've exposed the head of the screw that goes in the side of the taper pin plate and that allowed it to uh, it just basically freed it up from the fiberglass the straight edges and stuff and um, managed to wiggle the thing out and it's, it's just it's just a little trapped I went back and forth a few times and uh, actually got to come loose. <coughs> Real light persuasion with a plastic dowel and, um, and a, you know, like a dead blow hammer would probably make this a lot easier than trying to just pull it out by hand. But I just wanted to find out the minimum force required and uh, and really not hurt things. Where I actually went and I loosened it with uh, a plastic dowel, and you can see it just slides right out.
and you can see how there's just stray fiberglass uh, all over the um, around the um, side plates. So we're getting there. We've gotten, you know, half of it apart. Now we got to get these inside ones out, and that requires mining out the foam, which, you know, on a done wing you would have already done, in order to access the other set of screws. And I just used a, um, you know, a cone-shaped wire wheel on a drill and sort of sanded it out and it was easy and then I spent some time uh, scraping the the micro off of the plates and I actually didn't take off enough in this picture you can see it's around the edges and it actually needs to be all the way removed more like this side or this the top side here um, because that will um, trap the the uh, the plates and depending on your build you have may have more or less of that but it just it pops out. I used the uh, the wood chisel to just uh, scrape those off. But you can see how I mined back the the foam. Here I made a, a sheet metal heat shield. It, um, it's just some flashing cut to width and then uh, bent so that it slips down into the, the inside of the spar. And it doesn't have to go all the way down to the edges of the aluminum. It just needs to um, you know, expose most of it so you can heat it. The heat will be spread out by the, the aluminum itself. They're set up with a, the thermocouple, and um, I took some sheet metal bending pliers and put tape on them to protect the aluminum that I'll be gripping. And then it's just a matter of heating it up to about 95, um, and uh, then pull off the thermocouple and pull out the heat shield and uh, use the pliers to pull it out. I'm just kind of moving back and forth. You can see I'm up to, at this point, about 90-something. Just keep the keep the heat moving so that not, no one portion gets too hot. And it's 95, and so you'll see it'll keep going up a little bit. Um, and this, this is a good, good way to keep it from going over 100. And there's my... This is actually the other side. I've already taken one out. I didn't video that. So this is the last piece coming out, but you can see how I just used these pliers with tape on them, and um, then it didn't come out. So um, this, it came loose, so it's actually like a loose tooth at this point, but it's still trapped. So what I had to do was go back and get all of the micro that was on the edges off, and you can see that I just scraped it off and it's sitting down there in a pile. Um, and at this point, I didn't have to heat it again. I just, you know, grab with the pliers and pull it out. Uh, that micro was all that was holding it in. And that's it. Slips right out. 
And you see this, this has been around for a while. This is an old piece. And it, there's, you know, actually a tiny bit of, I mean, of corrosion on the exposed parts. I mean, you can just tell that it's been exposed to, you know, damp air and stored probably in a shed somewhere um, or hangar. And, uh, but where it's been bonded to the aluminum, or where the aluminum's been bonded to the, the fiberglass, it's, you know, squeaky clean brand new. And there's a mention of that in one of the canard pushers uh, by the rattans that they didn't find corrosion uh, where the fiberglass was bonded to the.